guys, so today we're going to be doing something a little different. We're going to be going through my Steam account and clearing out some of the backlog of that. So with the summer sellers come and gone, um, I got some pretty good deals and now I got to play them. So today we're going to be doing a pretty neat game. I was wanting to save it for October, but I really wanted to play it now, so might as well make a video about it now. Um, Darkest Dungeon. So um, if you guys are familiar with that, uh, like Lovecraftian uh, kind of doom and gloom gameplay, um, instead of it being set around the early Edwardian, late Victorian, it, the gameplay itself is more set in maybe the maybe the late 1700s. Um, you don't have like World War One or like steam powered stuff. It's more of a dungeon crawl. Um, fantasy with a lot of the Lovecraftian eldritch horror kind of put into it. Um, so we're going to take a look at the game and my general thoughts and feelings. It, it was a pretty tough game, but um, I kept playing it and playing it and playing it, so let's see how far I get into it. The story really just sticks you right in the middle of the horror. The opening scene spells it all out. Everything's breaking loose, you need to come back and deal with it, so come back and deal with it, you do. And it's really nice because typically when you're dealing with Lovecraftian horror, it's a slow build up to the horror. I mean, there's still unseen elements in the story that kind of get told through various pieces of paper and um, you see little things that the characters say throughout, but it's a lot different from the storytelling of your typical Lovecraftian, like in Dark Corners. There's initial kind of a jarring horror, but then it has a slow build, rebuilding up to what had happened prior. Initially the game seems pretty intimidating with its very stripped down basic gameplay. You move forwards, you move backwards, and you select what position of the map you'll be traveling to next. There's a lot of little things that are going on behind the scenes. Um, I guess your invisible dice rolls that will de uh, determine what kind of mobs are going to pop up. Um, if you're going to be doing any crit damage, are there any special benefits that the mobs have that they have over you to do extra damage? I feel that those spiders were especially not fair, but besides the point, when going through the game, and just learning the mechanics, you will experience some difficulty. Um, but after my initial impression of this game being really hard, I found that I was able to establish a really good pattern of building a solid team with my crusader or man-at-arms, um, like a range dealer, a healer, like the Vestal, and then like a... Oh, uh, is it an occult specialist in the, in the back? and then just kind of doing your damage and supporting yourself and just kind of rolling through it. Um, another part of it was managing the the downsides, like the, the diseases, the negative traits your characters pick. Um, going through it, a lot of them are fairly manageable, but then there's critical ones that you do want to take the time to make sure that you get rid of along with the hope, managing your stress. I brought up worth. About two complete, solid, like similar parties of characters, and just kind of took turns leveling them up and resting some, bringing some out. As you go further on in the game, you're able to manage your stress a lot more easily. So you really just got to deal with the ailments that a lot of the characters get, and how you're going to go into certain dungeons and deal with certain bosses. But with that in mind, you have the benefit on Steam of using the Steam Workshop. There's a lot of really cool additional content you can add to the game from the fan community. There's skins um, from Dark Souls, The Witcher, where you can add those characters. There's also classes that people made, um, different charms, and little mechanics that you can turn on and off. I, for example, didn't particularly like the negative effects that a lot of the charms had. There was a little mod that took those away. Um, there were mods that added more items in the background. Uh, there were ones that added more dungeons. So it's really worthwhile checking out and see what is 
being uploaded to Steam and try them out. Not at first, definitely try to play the game as is for a while and then tinker around with it because some of the balance is a little funny and you probably don't want some of the things. But after a while, it, by all means, give it a shot and see what you like. So with mods or without mods, I have to say that I really do recommend this game. It was a lot of fun. I didn't feel particularly um, put off by the challenge. It actually kept me going and kept me actively thinking throughout the gameplay. It's a very straightforward game when you get down to it. There's not the biggest variety, but it is pretty satisfying. Um, I picked this up for $10 which I feel is a pretty fair price for this type of game. Um, so I recommend just waiting a bit, and this is definitely something that will come up fairly often for sale. Um, it is also available on the PS4, Vita, and iOS, so there are plans on expanding it further, so definitely keep an eye out if you're waiting for it to come to your preferred platform. Uh, so. With that, I want to wish you guys the best, and we'll see you next time, and have a good one.